What's good, YouTube, and welcome to the house. It feels good to be back, but I will say I was gone for pretty much bad reasons. We both recently caught the crush card. It was the second worst disease of my life. The only one worse by far was bronchitis for me, and I have an allergic reaction to bronchitis. That's how I know I have it. I hive up. With the crush card, the head pressure was, like, completely immense. I still do have brain fog. My voice is still cracking. I'm hopped up on a couple different medications for sinuses here in texas you get allergies so that makes it even worse whenever i'm like trying to concentrate on something like after 10 to 15 minutes it kind of gets like brain the foggish my neck will seize up too a bit i'm guessing that's the sinuses so i've been working on you know loading tabs that kind of stuff and i plan to do a couple videos this week but if i sound a little dumber than usual stop to take a bit of a drink because the live editing done cheap on this channel i never edit so compliments to those who think i do that's what's going on the second part is unfortunately bad news emily's brother did pass away for those that were keeping up that's why i've been gone in large he was in a medically induced coma from having a diabetic uh, seizure and then he basically had to be put into that he came out he was doing better and then things happened again to where they had to put him back under and then he did not come back out from that so it's been a really rough journey. I haven't dealt with a prolonged situation like that before. I usually try to celebrate life after, and it's been a rough situation, and catching the crush card stopped us from being there with family at some of the most crucial times, so it, it's been a journey. But that being said, I'm going to try to take it slower here. That's why I've been gone. It's why I'm only going to be doing probably a couple videos for the next few weeks here or there at a time probably three this week three next week and no set schedule i'll be back to streaming probably towards the end of the month once like i'm better at the longer terms things and i i still with the brain fog stuff like it's such a difficult wall like staring at a spreadsheet like trying to do stuff for the patreons thank you for sticking on like i wasn't going to send them out while i had the crush card and even like trying to stare and like plug in and stuff i can only do 10 to 15 minutes at a time it is really rough when you have that that being said let's go ahead and get into the video starting with the megatons a lot of spoilers should be coming out tomorrow. Leaks have already been happening today and throughout last week and the week before. Uh, I do want to say there's a lot of interest in hyping the tens and trying to put them up on the next level. So I want to do a little reminder of the couple past year's tens. They've been complete flops, some of the worst for a flagship product we've seen from any card game ever. Ever, and the model just isn't working they plucked out too many cards to these tens you had rise the duelist in eternity code and failed this bad then you also have these tens where you interjected a bunch of good cards and then short printed them out the wazoo for the first time in tens ever short prints and tens absolutely not welcome and this is a total disgrace this year returns to promos promo you get one that's it you know you don't get multiple there so each 10 should be coming with a 25th anniversary promo of iconic cards. And that sounds really good on paper, except we also see the Legendary Collection 25th Anniversary Edition boxes. And <coughs> only ones even half the MSRP of the box. And you have the really good packs inside that are in pretty expensive boxes to get otherwise. And the rest of the promos aren't doing so good. So you're talking about Wing Dragon and Raw Obelisk Slifer. I get they're not the playable versions. But then Dark Magician. Yeah, Tablet Art. Red Eyes. I love this art. Not everybody does. And Tablet Blue Eyes. So like, not the craziest, most sought after cards in the world. But this is how they're performing. Now look back to the Mega Tens. You get one in every single 10 for this year. I, the promos aren't going to do the heavy lifting even as 25th anniversaries. Look at the realistic comparisons, which is something I said to do with another set we'll talk about in Market Watch. It's definitely like up to MSRP, which sucks. You know, vendors are paying more for these. And then they're ordered such in bulk off of their legacy. And this year... Rarity Collection, I think, is going to steal the show. Versus pre-orders on paper using my code, which I can track, I can look at different vendors, see what was ordered. 
Megatons didn't do too hot. And so I think there's going to be a lot of them on the shelf. And they better have some banger reveals tomorrow. Some huge surprises. And people will be incentivized to hype that up. Use a rational headed brain. The singles usually aren't too much unless it's a world premiere in here and it's a banger like, you know, Cross Out Designator, which got overshot on pre-sales, or Dragoon, which had a ban list have to help it. It's definitely been a rocky road for the tens pretty much the last couple of years, and I hope this turns around. It's all going to come down to what's inside. We'll talk about that more later in the week after the reveals. Tapio Cards has so many new things. You thought I wouldn't come back without a sponsored little bit. Code What's Good 5 for 5% off and to support the channel directly will work over here. And you have the Dandy Deck Box, which I think looks immaculate. I only topped one regional with Dandy Draw, but it was a fun time. Kentucky Regional, by the way. And then they also have an Ori Calcos box. They have a Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit plushie. They also have it's it's the little ghost that goes with it this really cool play mat that looks like so classic and a rescue hat they have been busy field center so many different things shout outs to them i haven't been able to shout them out while i've been gone and obviously this has been freaking awesome to see that custom work now let's talk duels nexus i gave a huge warning before you know i was uh, out for another time longer that i felt like the quarter century rares were going to have junk quarter century rares a lot of them would come down and on release it was looking like they were trying to cling to 52s it's all ultras and secrets they're all great cards and here we go the top end way down this is not the collectible people made it out to be with magician's bond revolution synchron i feel like should be atop the set is slowly maybe treading that way with the crimson second but the Chimera is creeping up a lot because it does pretty good with Brandon Despia and you know how copium desperate they are to be good. But seriously, the Chimera stuff is pretty sick. Who would have thought the Diamera cards would be busting out of here? Uh, some people actually predicted that. But overall, it is very strong and underrepped. Look at this. It's purely noir all the way down. That is crazy to me. The Unchained ahead of it. The Noble Knight stuff, some of it doing great, but actually one of them is the bottom card of the set. Revolution Synchron here is around 45. Now, to what I was talking about, junk quarter century rares, look at how many are now under 50. That is uh, quite a few with a lot of potential to some of them as well, I'll say. But yeah, a lot of them are down bad, dipping all the way, touching 30, probably going to go down even lower. The rest of the set people are blaming quarter century rares versus estimated value pulled for making a lot of the cards cheaper no it's just that a lot of the cards aren't that great in the set that's part of what it is fusion armament i really like that card too but potential doesn't always pan out chimera here from the ultras is up towards 24 then you have the crimson dragon around 10 the dark corridor around 10 and you have the unchained at eight and then everything else <clears throat> not doing too hot kind of kind of like me uh, is what the set is doing and the sealed fort is floundering it's pretty much failing uh you know <laughs> pretty much is an understatement i don't know why i thought of uh, a different set this this is not doing hot 52 dollars. it's it's terrible it's honestly just a bad situation for stores and these product performances are leading stores it's been a large conversation away from Yu-Gi-Oh! Ruxin's covered this and it's just really actually kind of upsetting to see how product is performing right now one that's not doing so bad is speed duel streets of battle city i belong to the streets of battle city i've been watching a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh on pluto while i was gone i also watched a bunch of venture bros i'm like through four and a half seasons dateline just started marathoning that just a ton of different things while keeping up with animes on the season but Surprise, surprise, what's on top? DM era reprints. You have a secret dust tornado for past formats, which is pretty cool. Same with Mind Crush, Summon Skull. I might, I might get me some of those. And the guarantee in here is the Red Dark Magician, which is why it's so far down here. And then uh, Widespread Rune Altar Art is interesting. This was first in uh, the Millennium set. Uh, Brain Fog, one second. Hey, it comes with Card and Demise. Let me know in the comment section down below. But the... The Millennium little dollar-ish packs that actually performed really well. This, that's where this altar art came first. 
Uh, but yeah, Secret Goblin Attack Force looking good. I think a lot of things will age well in here. The Slifer, you have another Secret Rare, already Speed Duel Slifer, that's way cheaper from another box, so I'd probably avoid the Slifer for now as well. But yeah, not doing too bad. Zeus is on the lower end, climbing. Again, every single version. I would get the Ultimate Rare if you're interested sooner than later, and I think it has the most potential to kind of double up-ish, like go towards 70, 80 from the 40 it's at now i think it's undervalued by far the quarter century rare has been doing all right the starlight is actually down thanks to the quarter century rare. i think the lows are 360 370 something like that if you click on it but yeah the lower versions not much stock especially monsters of legend monstrous revenge the newest battles of legend right this is like going up uh, out of quantities people would rather have it than the ultra out of the tens and people don't want to open these tens and here it is so zeus is climbing up into the sky once again and there is a really cool model kit coming out of zeus in the ocg eventually as well now this is the set that i thought was uh dual stacks that was doing okay it's not doing okay either wow that is bad 50 ish dollars a box here also chaos angel can't be carrying it alone uh, Chaos Angel has come down, as I did predict during the offseason, just a little bit, not a ton of bit, which is about how I thought. Rest of the set's been wonky. Bestial Dissipator, up overall since we last talked about it. Quim down a little. Lilith down a good amount. And yeah, this set is not eligible for Megatons, though. That's what it has going for it. And we'll see how it does perform, you know, versus these dips that it's stuck with for now. Konami's going to have a problem you know, actually doing, I feel like the tens the next year at this rate. It's pretty bad. I wanted to show a little bit of buyouts that have been happening over here. The 25th stuff. I noticed this right when I started to get sick, so I couldn't do a video on it or anything. But basically, all these cards had some kind of spike and buyout. And I think that's pretty bold. And this is the second time it's actually happened with this set. When it comes down to buying out the 25th anniversary cards, people did it heading into the box releases where a ton more would be there. They did it again recently. They have the iconic set name on it. L-O-B, M-R-D, whatever have you. I think people are trying to play a short game here because you could reprint these cards realistically next summer legendary collection rewave into stores or 30th anniversary promotion within five years they're not playing the super long game they're trying to flip those slabs faster in my opinion than the average kind of collectible that hails to a classic and i don't think the ultras actually look all that good i think the secrets look really really good but the ultras i'm not as big of a fan of that modern look on these cards many people aren't but that's the spike that's happening and i think it's like a collective more than like an actual stampede towards these look at summon skull which uh, i already pulled mine 43 dollars I, I it's not worth it and it's already coming back down a little bit but look at these crazy amounts of like sales on a card like that mm, it, it's really not all that worth it in my opinion so yeah they also did it with spell ruler like i saw when there was like four tune <laughs> mermaids yeehaw tunes are extremely popular and again this is kind of a cheaper window you have that thing but let's look at dark beginning to actually see how a market goes towards these remember how dark beginning stayed cheap forever then you had the crush card times where people from other card games came to diversify their portfolio and blindly went for a ton of stuff how, how would you be doing with these kinds of cards jinzo is one of my favorites of all time click on this check it out everybody's settling for light play mild play damage not a single near mint sale since may all right and so people are just wanting some form of the card if they're collecting and not willing to pay the 18 dollars, which is under the market price dollars on a card like this so when these really start to lose that momentum from having been out and been recent how do you think these are going to perform they're classic they do have that name there is a difference versus db1 but I think Konami could rewave this and probably will. And on top of it, you have your mid maxing versus the true thing. These are worse than regular unlimited versions of these cards that are ancient and look more classic and have that feel to them and don't have the erratas so you can play them in past format play and stuff like that more accurately for their era. But 
LLB by far performing the only one that's actually a dub ski, I believe, where everything else, they're trying to throw it out and get rid of it like a lot of other Yu-Gi-Oh! product. It's a huge problem this year, and it's bad. Rarity Collection hopefully will turn things around, along with Age of Overlord, should be pretty darn good. So we're about to hit a couple bangers and hopefully rinse the taste out of our mouth, but Yu-Gi-Oh!'s not in a great place, just like me. Thanks for watching today's Market Watch. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the conversation overall around the cards. And it's not always great news. That's part of life is dealing with loss, sickness, that sort of stuff. And I appreciate y'all being here with me through it. And those who waited, those especially in the Patreon super patient understanding, I appreciate you. I'll get to mailing things out here soon-ish. Uh... Hopefully by Wednesday, Thursday, and try to apply myself throughout tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody. And it does feel good to be back, and I plan to be back here a lot more consistently.